Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm feeling God tonight. Yes. Yes. Amen. Definitely. I was, I was so nervous at first, but then like after the first, second, third, I was like, yo, I'm ready. This is my turn. Yeah. I'm ready to find out why you have to start preaching. You know what I'm saying? Let us go. Let us yeah. go. I was like, yo, come on. It's my turn. <laughs> so I was ready. But I got to be quick because, you know, discipline right now for the timing. And I'm going to start speaking fast. So if you don't get to write it, we have it recorded. Just go back and play it again. Amen. I got to get this word out for you guys. Amen. I got the seventh word. You know what? Everybody been saying for a while. So if you can stand, stand up. Amen. You know? Stretch it out a little bit. We'll go a little bit, but not too much. We in church. Amen. 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 All right. So my word is. Luke, is it found in Luke chapter 23? It's 46, but I'm going to read from 44 to 49. Like the pastor says, we got to look from the beginning to the end, a little before and after. Amen. 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 So the word says, Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these signs. Amen. Y'all may be seated if you want to. If you happen to jump up during the middle, amen. So, as I was doing this, I was like, man, this is a lot of information. I don't know how I'm going to compress it down, but it's a lot. But we'll get through this together. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. So the word is, Father, into your hands I commit, right? Before I go there, he says, there was, um, and I was praying, I was like, I have a lot of information. So I was praying, I was like, please, God, let some of the people hit this so I don't have to keep hitting it. And God answered my prayers because they hit this. So I'm just going to buy it real quick, all right? I no need to repeat ourselves, but if God, unless God wants me to, then they got to hit somebody again. That's right. Amen? So it said three hours, of, there was, um, it was dark. And from when it, when it was dark, it was three hours of darkness. It was from 12 noon, in our time, I'm saying 12 noon to about 3 p.m. And it was dark. And that's very rare, rare right? Because that's when the sun is out. That's when it's supposed to be out. But it was three hours of darkness, and it was three completeness. So in those three hours, there was completeness right, right there. Amen? See, this was a remark uh, this is remarkable because it showed the agony, agony of creation itself in the creator's suffering. Amen? Amen? I just have to read this. It's um I have some stuff. It's this one is found is um if you look it up, it's in the David Guzik commentary. Uh -huh. It says The crucifixion took place during Passover season, and Passover is always held at a full moon. A natural eclipse of the sun is impossible during a full moon. And that's what happened here. How was it dark? There was an eclipse, but it was impossible for it to happen. But who do we serve? God. A God of the impossible. impossible. Come on. Amen. 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 So, now going through that, we read that the veil was torn, right, into two. Everybody hears this, the veil is torn in two. What does that mean to you? Someone shout it. What does veil torn in two mean? Anybody know? Split freedom. Split freedom? All right, I'll tell you, I guess, if you want me to tell you. I thought y'all knew. I thought I would be able to, like, you know, kind of slide tell over me. that. All right, so he, um, the veil was torn, but I, um, in Matthew and Mark, it signifies that it was torn after he said it. After all this happened, after he said, Father, I commit my spirit to you, then the veil was torn into two. But I'm just going to say, the veil was torn into two. It was split in half. It signified taking away a ceremonial law, which was a wall of partition between the Jews and the Gentiles. That's right. And all other difficulties and discouragements in our lives, Amen. in our um, approaches to God. He ripped it. So we may go boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. See, when he did this, he did it. There's Amen. two. At least two things that were signified right here. First, man has free access to the throne of grace by the cross. That's right. So we got no excuse. Come on. Now we go through Jesus, 
to him. We don't have to go through no priest. We don't have to do no Amen. sacrifice to get to him. We go Amen. to him directly. Right. Second, no one should ever think that God dwells in the temple made with hands. That's the second one. We can't. God doesn't only dwell in here. God doesn't only dwell in the new temple that we're about to get. That's He's right. supposed to dwell in our hearts. That's we right. are the temple. That's so right. he's supposed to carry it with him. Amen. 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 Let's keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> now, in Matthew, it signif- I'll tell you exactly the verse. It's 27, verse 51. It signifies that it was ripped from top to bottom. Uh-huh. Only God could do that because it was too, that temple was too high. Ain't no one gonna be able to, who will really go up top high just to crack something so it can break down? That, that's too much work. Especially now that it's too much work. We're too lazy to do that. We're just trying to pay someone or do something, you know, just so we do it. But it tore from the top to the bottom. So, having said that, it came from heaven to earth. That's and right. that's right here. Heaven opened up and came to yeah. earth. So, we have no excuse, really, because heaven is in earth. That's and Jesus right. was walking. Heaven was on earth. Amen. Amen. So now that's just a representation of heaven really being on earth and the temple cracking down. Yeah. Let's keep going. <laughs> I don't got that much time, you know. I got to get it all out of here. Amen. We got, um, he said next, he said he cried out with a loud voice. And this is a seven for it. This is him actually giving himself away. And he's saying loud if you go back to that time, you'd be like, yo, how is this guy speaking still? He's almost dead. He, he, he got whipped when he wasn't supposed to. He bleeding to death almost. You know, how the, how did he do that? And see, but he cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus. Just the fact alone that he spoke loud tells us that he was still in control of his destiny. You know what I'm saying? He was in control of this. The Pharisees or the people may have thought, oh, yeah, we got him. He think we're killing him. You know, we're killing. They're going to say we're killing them. uh, We got them down. But it was like it was the other way around. He was like, I'm only allowing you to do this to me. I'm allowing it to happen because I'm fulfilling Scripture. That's right. I'm fulfilling right. what was supposed to be done. Yes. So he he put his spirit now into God's hands. Beautiful. And I was like, God, what can I get with this? What can I get with this? I I really was like, what does it mean to put my um commit my spirit into your hands? And the funny thing though too is um, if you go back, David says this. I'm not going to read the verses. We don't have enough time for that. But I will tell you where, to, where you can find it, and you can read it at your own time. Mm-hmm. David, when he wrote Psalms, he says it as well. And it says uh, in Psalms 31, verse 5, and he says, In Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now, who else better to say it than Jesus? Come on. Come on. He was fulfilling the scripture of what David said. Now he put it into, see, it went from past to present. And I'm going to tell you something, too. It went to future. That's because right. in Acts 7, 59, Stephen, or Stephen, however you want to say it. I think it was Stephen. He, uh, <laughs> he said the same exact thing as Jesus said right here. So, while well, Sister Karina said, past, present, future, is still happening. Right. And it's for the future as well, as it is right now. So David confidently committed himself to God's care because God had faithfully delivered him and proved to um, true to his promises. He confidently give it. We, can't, we, we have to give it to God. Right. When are we going to... Commit our spirit to God. Wow, Another yeah. word for commit yeah. is deposit. Yeah, you know right. when you get a paycheck and you that's got to right. deposit it into the bank? Now you trust the bank to hold on to your money. Come or you're on. trusting someone to give you. If you want to just exchange your money, you're trusting that person to give you the correct amount Come that you on. want. Yes. Right? So now he deposited his life into him. We have to deposit our life. Not our lives, actually. Our souls. Yes. Our spirits yes. to God. That's yes. right. 
So we have to deposit ourselves. Wow. Amen? Right. Yeah. And the reward, we'll get paid. Trust me, we'll get paid. It's, yes, we will. You may not see it materialistically, but spiritually, it still comes. Eternal life, life. life. is right around the corner. Hey, I'd rather be in heaven than suffering. That's you know what I'm saying? Well, uh, it's all the truth right now. Same see, and, that, and that's just it. This is when we tell God, that's it. It's time for you to take over. Take over now. Take over my life. Yes. I'm no longer going to interfere or put my hands in it, but, put, but be able to um, have your hands move in me. Yes. Uh, I'm going to, when you say, into your hands, I came in my spirit, I'm going into God's hands. I'm going into God's cover. Because yeah. if you go into something, you start to cover it, right? Woo. And you be covered. Mm-hmm. Now now you're protecting it with your, if it's yours. And we are God's. Amen. So now he was... He was finishing up. He was going back to where he actually came from. And he went back to where he belonged. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. See, when he said this, this was, he accomplished his work on the cross. You may think, well, I would have thought that when he said it is finished, that's it. He would have been, bloop. He would have been gone. But he still had to say one more, one more word mm-hmm. or one more phrase. Mm-hmm. So Jesus. this was him saying he accomplished his work on the cross. So there was no longer enough for him to suffer. Why would he stay and suffer some more when he was already done? Mm-hmm. So Glory. that's what shows right there that he had control of his life and his destiny. See, he yielded his spirit, mm. like how he yielded his body to the death on the cross. That's right. Jesus gave up his life when he wanted to and how he wanted to. That's right. He decided how he this was going to happen. He knew how it was going to happen, mm-hmm. and he still went through it with it for us. Thank you, Jesus. No one, like I said, no one took his his life from him. He gave it up when his work was finished. He gave it up. He gave it up. Mm-hmm. That's right here. He said he breathed, he breathed his last breath mm-hmm. after he said that. And right there, we got to stop saying, we got to stop looking at Jesus. Jesus is not a victim we should pity. He was a victim, but we shouldn't pity him. We can feel sorry because it hurts. Mm-hmm. Even seeing it hurts. If you see someone on the street getting whipped, mm-hmm. and their skin getting pulled out and then put on a cross, that will hurt you too, seeing that. So, but we shouldn't pity him. Mm-hmm. But but he is a conqueror we should admire. We should admire to be like him. That's right. We may not have to go through the same pain as him because yes. he did it for us. That's right. But we should be acting towards him, be like him. Right. That's why he says, like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> I just, um, when he said it, and like I said, if you find it in the, in the Old Testament, this was his last word, right? This is what's really special right here. He died with scripture in his mouth. The last thing he died, he said was in scripture. That was the word of God. We have to learn how to have the word of God in us. Of what we say, of what we do, our actions too. And it's so great because he could have said anything else, but he said this word. So if he could do it, so can we. We just have to study the word. We have to know all about it. He um he breathed his last breath after that. This shows also like how he like I said, remember I said he deposited his soul. It shows how that the soul is has immortality and the spirit. But we have to separate the existence with the body when it's dead. We can't stay dead but live. And there's only one way to live, and that's your eternal life, but eternal life with him. Because if we don't have that eternal life, you're going to be living, but you're going to be living dead. And you're going to have to relive that dead part. You're not going to be living happily. You know, and say happily ever after. Yeah, it's not true for a lot of things. So you have to be committed into him. See, now, I, I want to focus a lot, too, on what happened after. After he beat his last breath. Because I was like, I really need to focus on something. And this is, this is what I had to focus on. The centurion man saw what he had happened and he glorified, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. Mm-hmm. If you find it in Matthew and in Mark, it says, this is truly the son of man, son of God. 
he saw it happen after when after everything took place because the um the veil torn there was an earthquake and stuff and he and he saw all this miracle and he said this is truly the son of god and he got convicted right there i found that so incredible incredible right now mm -hmm. just him getting convicted after the fact that he saw this the, the miracle in god it was god manifesting his power so much to do him honor with plain evidence of his innocence he was innocent and that's the whole thing of what we're saying within the, with the first word. And that's why he said, Father, forgive them. Because he was innocent, but they didn't know what was happening. They just went with it. And I like, because if you read, and it's in John 12, 32. And this is, the centurion man proves this is what happens. It says, this is a picture of all who came to Jesus through the cross, fulfilling Jesus' promise, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. In John 12, 32, it says that, that he is, when he, I am, if I am lifted up from the earth, he will draw all peoples to himself. And that right there proves it. Because once he died on the cross, the centurion man was the first man to say, I believe. And that, now that goes on to us. We see it, we hear it, but then now we say, I believe. So I believe that he, he died for our sins. I believe that is Jesus, Son of God. Jesus. See, and what happened after was, I just, I was in a shock a little bit amazed of, with the crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. See, they, he, um, he didn't convert, convert them, but they were convicted, he convicted them of sin at that moment. See, they were just there. They, uh, they smote their breasts and returned. Smote their breasts, they beat upon their hearts. They, they had a moment, at that moment, they was just, they felt sorry. They, they actually, what I'm saying, they realized what they just done and they felt bad for it. But they didn't feel bad for long. Because right after that, it says, and they returned. They returned. They went back to their normal living. They returned to their houses. They left. And what I was saying is, you're always going to, how do you say, have a crowd. You have the Pharisees. They wanted to kill Jesus because they just didn't like him. They thought he was too much. And then you have the other people who was like, oh, I feel bad for God. Like, he had his disciples and then his acquaintances as well, but they were from a distance. But then you always had those other people in the crowd just to fill the gaps. And they just gonna pick a side or whatever's popular. They might not know what's going on, but they just gonna pick a side. See, and they they looked upon it as a wicked thing to put him to death and cannot but think that some judgment of God will come upon their nation for it. See, they felt sorry at the moment because they didn't want to get punished for it. See, they, they didn't want their nation to come under for it. So, and you know what's funny is that these were the people that they saw, it, they, but they were crying. Most likely, I'm gonna say, they were crying, crucify him, crucify him. Those same people spitting on him. Mm. Same people yeah. slapping him, throwing yeah. stuff at him. And yet, then they felt sorry for him. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? It's just like this world. Just like how we live in right now. That's You're going to have the people come at you. And they're going to say, crucify her. Crucify him. Mm. Hit you. Try to get you down. Try to do anything it is possible so you will feel bad and you, will, you won't go forward in That's what you're right. doing. That's right. But then when you make it, it's the same, very same people. I'm like, That's I was right. there. I watched you when I was That's going right. up. I watched you. Hallelujah. But they weren't cheering for you. That's wow. right. Yes. Come on. They, yes. they watched you, yes. but they were against you. Yes. But now that they see you, Come they want to be with you. Yes. They want a little something from you. Yes. It don't work like that. That's right. But with Jesus, it does. Amen. Because that's why he said in the beginning, he said, forgive them for they do not know what they've done. And so when he said that in the beginning, it, it took off till right now. That's right. He's still going to forgive them. Mm -hmm. He's, we still have to forgive them. But I say the, the same, 
And I learned it from my father. Not that father, this father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your earthly father. My earthly father. There we go. Forgive. You know what I'm saying? Forgive and forget? Yeah, yeah. Forgive and forget. No, you forgive. You never forget. That's right. But you forgive and learn. Forgive and learn from what had just happened. Forgive and learn. Don't never forget it, though. You can always forgive someone. But just learn from that. So you won't do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you can be stronger from it. So you won't fall for the same thing. That's the difference here. See, now the people were so terrified of that darkness, you know, from the darkness to the earthquake, to everything happening, that they just beat on their own hearts. And they didn't, they didn't know. But then I believe it soon wore off because it says they were turning and it just soon wore off them and they didn't even think twice about it. They just did whatever they had to do. They just they were just there, like I said, and then they were off. The impression seemed to be wearing off of them. Somehow, after seeing all that, seeing the miracles too during the process, and it's just like, and we can even see further down the road that they forgot about it. Jesus. See, and now we just, <clears throat> And Nora hit the very subject, this is what I'm, I'm going to be ending with, though, too, because it was, he was by himself when it was happening. All his um, disciples and stuff and his acquaintances and the people he was, they knew and they were told to stay at a distance. Because if they were to get too close, they could get prosecuted for it because, oh, they were with him. They were with him. You know what happened with Peter when Peter denied them? When he was like, weren't you... That God, I was like, no, no, that wasn't me, that wasn't me, because they knew, but Jesus was all alone, but this is the funny thing, it's because he had to be alone, it was just for him alone to take this upon himself, it was just for him alone for us, and this is sad, but it had to be done, he was by himself, you know who else was by themselves, Job, hmm. Joe was by himself when all of this, all his problems was happening. He got sick. He don't know why he got sick. And you know what happened? His family went against him. His friends went against him. They said, oh, something must have happened that you're sick. Something must have happened that you're losing all of this. Something must have happened. But yet nothing happened. But yet, whatever family remained, it was only a little bit. A little bit of relatives, a little bit of friends. It was very little. And that's what happened with Jesus. Everyone around him, it was very little. He, bare, he didn't have no one really he was with. None of his acquaintances or his disciples was, were around him at that time. Which is very heartful. But it's okay, because it had to be done. And he took this burden upon himself just so we could be safe. And like I said, no matter what happens, he was still blessed. And Job was double blessed after that. Once he got better, he got he got doubled of what he had. Jesus, Jesus had triple. I don't know. I don't think I can even say called triple of what happened. Because he once he breathed his last breath, that was it. He, he committed his spirit to God and God had him now. It hurt it for a second. But it was a lifetime of paradise mm. so that we could follow into that lifetime of paradise. So I'll just tell you, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And this is a great thing because he started with Father and he ended with Father. He may have said at a point with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But that was because of the agony that he was in. But he started with gentleness and ended with gentleness because that's the God we serve. Amen. The Father, the Father. Commit your spirit, but into who hands? Amen? God bless.